Hello there. Once again, this is Anton from Anton Will Bay, and I'm still slowly but surely going through this uh, large collection of stuff that I got recently. Um, collection of a, a guy who passed away. And anyway, I, I've been doing large lots, and this is just some small stuff that doesn't really fit with anything else. And, and a couple of books I got in the mail this week. Uh, first off, we have uh, some IDW Ninja Turtles uh, micro series. It looks like Raphael. I'm not super familiar with any of the IDW stuff. I mean, I've never, never really read much of it, never been that interested. Um, but you got a few issues of it with this big set. I do love the art on this front cover. I don't really know like what a lot of the differences are to this version of Ninja Turtles or if it's a continuation of the old Ninja Turtles. I don't know. Um, the IDW stuff is new to me. I don't, I'm not familiar with the whole publishing company in general, but I got a few issues of it and I'm pretty excited about that. Um, a, a couple other books that didn't really fit in with anything. I got some Vampirellas. Vampirella from Harris Comics. He didn't have a lot of these. He only had two, in fact, in the entire collection. And, you know, you always kind of wonder, why did he buy these two? Out of, like, the whole series, why did he get these? I'm not a, I'm not a huge Vampirella fan, but I am a fan of the, the ridiculous bad girl phase of the 90s. So, I'm, I'm pretty excited to have those. Um, then we got some stuff that I'm not sure. I know this, I know this is a reprint. This is like a color reprint of the original Ninja Turtles. <coughs> Pardon me. Anyway, any, I will always take that. It's always fantastic. I have it in a trade version, but having it in just a single issue, that I'm very excited about. Then, then it gets a little confusing, and I'm not sure. He has some Eastman and Laird Ninja Turtles. Um, April 1989, issue 20. He had a few of these. They were all bagged and boarded. I just, I, I wanted them loose so I could pop them open and kind of show you guys the insanity of some of this artwork. Look at that Triceraton. Looks like an ink blot test. But... You know, this is this is stellar work. It's really amazing. And I'm not sure, like, on this early Ninja Turtle stuff, I'm not sure how to tell if it's first prints or originals or what. I know, like, the first books that came out were, like, large. A little bit larger than stand standard stuff. There's Den. I remember that series. That was pretty good, decent. I had a couple issues. But, you know... Yeah, I don't, I don't know even where to look on these where it's a first printing or whatever like that. But I'm pretty excited to have them either way. If they are original, you know, 21, that's, that's some of the older Ninja Turtles books I've ever, ever had in my hands. And I am excited about the, the idea of that. That and the art in these is just fantastic, so... I'm very pleased. He did have an original Ninja Turtles 3 um, in the collection. And it's one of the books that I actually, when I was going through it, I pulled it out and I said, here, don't sell this in bulk. Book, in bulk. Uh, find a buyer for this. This is too good to just, you know, put in the box with everything else. I got issue 19. And like I said, I just, I'm not sure whether these are first printings. Or where it says that, if it would. Anyway, um, like I said, it doesn't matter to me whether it's a first printing or not. I'm gonna put them back in their bags after this video's over. And, I mean, look at it. It's just amazing. And it looks like this is them still on the farm. Which I've said before, uh, the Ninja Turtles, after their defeat, and they go live on April's old farm it is my favorite Ninja Turtle story arc of all time. Absolutely loved it. I was raised on a farm, so those were super important in my fanship. Um, 
And then we got a couple of these. I got a Leonardo. Um, just a, like a Leonardo solo story. This is the issue, or the story, I should say, where he gets attacked on his own. They kind of did this in the movie with Raphael. But like, Leonardo holds off against the entire Foot Clan for most of the issue. It's a really great book. Um, Leonardo... I, I used to say Donatello, but Leonardo has grown on me and probably become my most favorite. Um, then I also have this like uh, Michelangelo Christmas special. Once again, amazing, amazing Ninja Turtle black and white art in this thing. I am so happy to have these. I don't know how these, I think these are like reprints of different stories from the regular series that, that kind of they made like, oh, this this is a bunch of Michelangelo stories. We'll put that all in one thing. But I'm very pleased with them. Another book that um, I don't know anything about. This is Melting Pot. It was with the Ninja Turtle stuff. It's from Kitchen Sink Comics. It's It's got Kevin Eastman's work in it. I'm not sure what part he is playing in this thing. But the art is... Yeah, the art is... It's dark, and it's good, and it's creepy. It's very, like, I don't know. It says to me, like, the heavy metal magazines is what I think of when I see it. But I had to have this thing out of the bag, because you ha I had to crack it open. You had to see this, because some of the stuff is just nuts. Like, who draws like that? And look at this, look at this big open page spread. Gosh, you don't see this stuff anymore. Not like that. Not like that they don't. Anyway, I wanted to show that off. And then I wanted to get to my my books that are Grail books. Even though I spent a huge fortune on, you know, this comic collection and everything like that. I had a couple of auctions that I won. And I was very pleased to get them. And they are, they are Grails to me. I am a huge Cloak and Dagger fan. So Peter Parker, uh, The Spectacular Spider-Man, number 64... Out of the, the two or three long boxes of freaking Spider-Mans that I've gotten all over, out of these collections, that they don't have this issue. This is a little bit of a rough copy. I don't really care. I just want the book. I'm a reader. I don't, you know, I'm not like a, a greater Nazi or anything like that. I just want the book. I want to read this story, and I don't want it in a trade. I want it in the original issue in my hands. This being a newsstand edition, of the original version. It's a little rough, like I said, but I don't care. It's the first appearance of Cloak and Dagger. I'm thrilled. I'm thrilled to get it. I think I got it at a pretty darn good price. If you ever wondered, there is their first appearance right there. They just pop up and there they are. So anyway, that is the first appearance of Cloak and Dagger. And it's a book I've wanted for a long time. I never thought I'd get. But this last year, I've really made a push to get um, first appearances. And I've never done that before. I've, I've always just marked them as kind of out of my, eh, I don't feel like spending the money on it. But this year, I've, I've gotten most of the really good ones. And this is one I didn't have, and this is one I really wanted. So I'm just thrilled with it. And the last book I'm going to share with you, um, I am a huge She-Hulk fan. So, uh, The Savage She-Hulk, number one, 1979. Um, as you can tell, this is a very rough copy. <coughs> Sorry again. I'm choking on popsicles, I think. Anyway, it's rough. I'm not going to pretend that it's not. It feels like a dollar bill. It's very floppy. It's like a dollar bill that's been carried too long. But I'm okay with that. I kind of love... I kind of love a dirty, sweaty issue. It makes it feel like it's been read. It makes it feel like it's got more history to it. Um, somebody read the piss out of this thing in the day. Somebody carried this thing around. Some kid hauled this thing around and read it. And read it a bunch. And that's just awesome to me. And now I own it. Now I'm reading it. I, I'm, some books I understand people like putting in CGC grades and, and slabbing. But man, there's just sometimes I just want the book in my hand. And it feels wrong to do that. So, I mean, you got to read this, the story of Bruce visiting his cousin Jennifer, gives her a blood transfusion after some mob guys shoot at her. 
which he can't, he had to know that wasn't a good idea. I don't know why he thought that was a great idea. But there she is. There's the first breakout appearance of the, the Savage She-Hulk. So I wanted to have these books out because I wanted you guys to actually like, see that. I wanted to remember that. I wanted to capture that on film because that really meant a lot to me to finally have these two books. These are, I think, some of the last um, grails or uh, what do they call them? Keys that were out of my reach for a long time. And I, I took low grades and I got cheap. I got good prices on these. And I'm just super thrilled to have them. And I just wanted to share them. Those are my books. And that's my story. I thank you guys for watching. And I'll catch you later. Bye.